Hello, and welcome to this special Insight Forum, Understanding and Preparing for a Future of Converging Crises. I'm Clifton Ware, a founding member of Insight Forum Group and narrator for this presentation in five parts. You may choose to view it either straight through or at a more leisurely pace, one section at a time. If you're familiar with the distinguished work of Chris Martinson, creator of the highly acclaimed The Crash Course, you will recognize some similarities in material and overall approach. We highly recommend The Crash Course for in-depth study in both book format and free online course. Although the words converging crises in the title may suggest a doomsday scenario, that is not our intent. Our goal is to explain all the interrelated problems facing civilization, followed by offering some proactive steps for developing resilience. If you're feeling anxious about the direction everything is going, you're in good company. There are ample reasons to be worried about the state of the world, wondering what to expect and what to do. So although we hope overall conditions will improve or at least stabilize, our group aspires to be well prepared, flexible, and adaptive in facing whatever the future may bring. We formed this group with three goals in mind. To raise awareness and understanding about the major converging world crises, to discuss possible solutions and responses, and to promote more grassroots activism. Our focus will be on the interconnectedness of the three big E's, energy, environment, and economy, in addition to some sub-E's, such as expectations, equality, and enlightenment. At the outset, we offer some disclosures and disclaimers. First, we don't profess to have all the answers to concerns about the world's major crises, but we are curious, open-minded seekers. Second, we use information and data provided by reputable experts and organizations, although some data may be based on educated estimates, as with population numbers. Third, although we are very grateful for our comfortable middle-class American lifestyles, among the highest in the world, we like to think we can live well with less. Fourth, although each of us has opinions and beliefs that shape our worldviews, on most issues, our group is of one accord. Finally, although we cannot predict the future, we can strive to understand underlying socioeconomic and ecological trends and, when sufficiently informed, undertake proactive measures. To recap, we'll focus primarily on the three big E's, energy, environment, and economy along with some references to three secondary E's, expectations, equity, and enlightenment. We can only wonder what these beautiful, intense eyes are viewing, and what the interpretation might be. It's common knowledge that our perceptions influence how we interact with various aspects of our world, and the worldview we hold is shaped by our life experiences, including the information we take in, and the opinions and beliefs we form. One of our prime beliefs is this. For the first time in history, the human race must confront the physical limits to growth on a finite planet. And we base this belief on ample evidence, which we hope to make clear during this presentation. As we all know, Many opinions and beliefs are not founded on facts, but more commonly on hearsay, the media, and irrational thinking. When some people make up their minds, they simply don't want to be confused with facts. We observe this response when checking the daily news, with accounts of people on the extremes of left and right holding fast positions not supported by facts. In sum, Beliefs are very powerful determinants of behavior, and many of the conflicts we're experiencing may be attributed to beliefs founded on half-truths, complete falsehoods, and willful, wishful thinking. Let's consider some popular beliefs that are seldom questioned. 1. Material growth creates prosperity. 
Thanks to plentiful cheap energy and pro-growth business and political forces, we've grown very comfortable with a weekly regulated free market economy that encourages extravagant consumerism, which is founded primarily on massive debt. Number two, expanding technologies and increasing complexity can solve our problems. The long-term external costs of technological advances tend to be overlooked, notably the chemical pollution of air, water, and soil that eventually makes its way into the bodies of all living creatures. Three, the economy is independent of nature. This disconnect is perhaps the most insidious of all, as we have become increasingly dependent on goods and services provided by unknown numbers of people worldwide. Nature is viewed in three principal ways, as a utilitarian commodity to be exploited for human good, as a source of beauty, inspiration, and recreation, and as an integrated, interdependent ecological biosystem capable of supporting existing life forms. Number four. Common sense serves us better than critical thinking and factual evidence. Perhaps it would be more useful to replace common sense with good sense, which relies more on the use of critical thinking and factual information. So, if we don't always rely on good sense, how did we get this way? Well, we might begin with our genetic inheritance. Human beings have been evolving for a mere 200,000 years but for us modern Homo sapiens, only around 50,000 years. For example, with your arms stretched sideways, left to right, a span of approximately 5 to 6 feet, representing Earth's age of 4.5 billion years, human beings enter the scene at the very tip of the farthest fingernail on the right hand. One thesis suggests that our brains have simply not evolved fast enough to deal with the modern world's increasing complexity. For much of human history, our ancestors focused on basic survival needs, relying primarily on instincts and experience. Eventually, in coping with increasing complexity, our brains evolved to handle greater complexity, including social cooperation and higher reasoning. In the past 5,000 or so years, knowledge has expanded exponentially especially since the 18th century, largely in conjunction with increasing use of fossil energy in fueling the industrial age. This rapid growth in complexity has climaxed over the last few decades, overloading our brain circuits and forcing us to become more selective in what we learn and do. As an example, just consider how much history today's students must learn in comparison with people living at the turn of the 20th century. Fields of knowledge have expanded greatly in the last 150 years or so, creating ever more specialist and subspecialist. Many scientific and technical fields are especially challenging to the average person, as are large numbers that reach into the millions, billions, and trillions. To better understand the challenge of large numbers, we'll now look at the related factors of compounding and exponential growth. Compounding, or doubling, and exponential growth are not readily understood by many people. And because these two factors help explain several converging crises, we'll provide some brief explanations. When considering percentages of growth, as with loans and investments, the rule of 70 is used to calculate doubling time. For example, a 10% return on an investment over a 7-year period will result in a doubling to $20,000, a profitable $10,000 return. The next example of doubling illustrates that, beginning with 1 plus 1 equals 2, and continuing for 15 doublings, we reach a grand total of 32,768. Very impressive numbers. To further illustrate the power of compounding, We'll use a little magic to help illustrate the doubling effect and how it can propel exponential growth. Imagine that you are seated on the top row of the Minneapolis Metrodome or another large stadium and you are handcuffed to your seat. At 12 noon, standing in the middle of the field, a magician places a magic drop of water that doubles every minute. 
filling a thimble in six minutes. Now, how long will it be until you are underwater? To help dramatize the size and scope of the space to be filled, here's the metrodome. Remember, a magic drop of water is used, but the exponential doubling figures are solid. Are you ready for the countdown? So we began at 12 p.m., and 45 minutes later the stadium is only 3% filled. But here's the kicker. Only 5 minutes later, at 12.50 p.m., the remaining 97% of water fills the stadium. Wow! Perhaps you can now better understand the power of compounding and exponential growth. When using graphs, the power of compounding and exponential growth is viewed in a hockey stick shape, as illustrated with the red line. This pattern of increasing exponential growth has been experienced in most areas of modern life and has resulted in various bubbles, as occurred in the 2007 U.S. real estate market. Because we tend to think linearly in lines, Understanding exponential growth can be a real challenge. This illustration is especially interesting because it clearly shows that increasing numbers of people result in increasing consumption of resources. Notice the horizontal line, which shows how stable the world population remained for hundreds of years, up until around 1804, when the first billion of humans arrived. Not long afterwards, when coal was a primary energy source, oil was discovered in 1863, and lo, a rapid upswing in population growth occurred, along with the advent of cheap, easily found fossil fuels, effectively reducing human and animal labor and spurring rapid economic growth. After 1804, each additional billion of people arrived quicker and quicker, from a period of 123 years in 1927 to 12 years in 1999. A slight slowing trend is predicted by 2028, but we may still have over 9 billion people by 2050. Some experts estimate that with increasing numbers of high consumers, the Earth is experiencing an overshoot of resources and by 2050 may require the equivalent of three to four Earths to adequately sustain such a large population. It's estimated that the Earth is already in a 30% overshoot, indicating the potential for dire shortages in the next few decades. Here we see the hockey stick shape in illustrating a synchronized upward curve in several areas. Population, resource depletions, investments, consumption, GDP, global temperature, and so on. Practically everything that can be measured is illustrated as a hockey stick shape during this historical period, especially fossil energy extraction and use, which we will next consider. <laughs>